Hello, ladies and gentlemen, financial advisors around the world. I am Bill Winterberg of FPPad.com, and we are broadcasting live. Uh, here I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, live for the first time in 2013. And the guest that I have with me today, his name is Neil Rhine, and he is president of uh, Bullseye Financial Communications. Neil, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thanks, Bill. Thanks for having me. Now, Neil, as we go into 2013, uh, tell me a little bit about Bullseye Financial Communications and some of the uh, some of the services that you provide to financial advisors. Sure, thank you. Uh, well, we uh, we've been around since 2005, and uh, you know we specialize in developing uh, editorial and marketing content for financial services companies, including advisors. So that runs the gamut from uh, newsletters. Articles, white papers, uh, marketing uh, brochures, uh, blog content, pretty much anything uh, of uh, editorial or marketing uh, nature where someone needs something written on a financial topic, uh, that's, that's what we do. So give me an example of some of the hot topics that you were covering in 2012. I mean, I have to admit probably the fiscal cliff tops the list, but what are some other examples of topics that you've been providing written commentary for for the financial services industry? Well, it really runs the gamut. I mean, we've got clients uh, who market to financial advisors, so it might be, uh, you know, issues, uh, you know, one, one uh, client of ours is Fidelity Investments, so, you know, we, we write about uh, products, their products and services that they're marketing to financial advisors. Um, Things about compliance, uh, social media, uh, best practices for advisors, how they can uh, market their services to their clients, um, and then you know, also we do some work for uh, publications to go out to stock plan administrators. So that gets into some technical stuff, uh, and then there's also uh, some you know personal finance type uh, content for financial advisors that they send out send out to their clients. So it could be. Uh, a weekly, monthly, or quarterly market commentary. Uh, it could be a white paper on a particular topic or uh, e-newsletter content. So, so articles the, on whatever's happening in the markets, how to plan for retirement, all those kind of perennial topics. So for nearly 10 years, you have a lot of experience writing about financially related topics so what are some of those tips when you work with advisors when when advisors might ask you what can I do to improve my financial communications what what is that best tip what are perhaps two tips that you can tell all financial advisors when they're thinking about composing their next piece of copy next written content for their audience be they prospects or clients uh, what are those tips that you really recommend for those advisors I guess first off, it would be to have a strategy, uh, a communications strategy, you know, to communicate to your clients and prospects on a regular basis. Uh, some people have that, some people don't. So assuming uh, you know you've got something in place, um, you know, I would I, I counsel people to think about the problems that you solve for your clients. Uh, that's and, and communicate about those issues. Think about the questions that you most commonly get from your clients. If you're struggling for topics, you know that's a, a frequent a thing I see is where um, an advisor or advisory firm may say that you know it may start a newsletter or a blog or something of that nature, and after two or three issues, they they kind of run dry. You know, they they run out of ideas, and the well runs dry. And uh, to me, if you're not going to commit to it for the long term, you're better off not even starting it because. Um, you know, you've set the expectation that you're going to be providing valuable content, and then if you fall short of that, you know, you, you've disappointed your, your, your clients and prospects. Um, and then secondly, I would say, um, you know, to focus on educating people and not selling to them. Um, you know, as you, we all probably know, um, you know, it's not a snap decision to hire a financial advisor. It's something people will kind of think long and hard about. Um, I know in my own case, you know, the advisor I ended up hiring, it was a result of going to their website, reading about uh, their approach, signing up for their e-newsletter, and over the course of a year, reading that newsletter, and after a year, I was sold. And I was, oh, you know, I really like this this guy's approach, and I agree with uh, you know his strategy and so forth, and it's a good fit. So it's not a quick sale, so it, you know you can't really expect an immediate payoff. 
but over time, when people have that need, uh, hopefully they're going to think of you uh, if they've been reading your, your content and it's, it's good, valuable content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you talked about having a pipeline of new content to talk about. Uh, one of the other advisors I've interviewed on the on-air broadcast was Russ Thornton. He's another advisor in Atlanta, Georgia here. And he actually went reads all sorts of stuff on the online and when he finds something of interest he saves it to a service called pocket uh, similar to service like read it later or perhaps other advisors might have one folder where they just route and dump printouts or saved PDFs of all this content and that kind of populates their pipeline for strategies so along those lines you talked about having a regular schedule what what do you think is a good practice for an advisor and an advisory firm to follow with respect to a communications calendar you talked about the newsletter that your now advisor had that you read for a year what do you think a good you know periodic update timeline looks like what have you really learned out of the 10 years of your your financial communication experience I would say at a minimum for an advisor, quarterly, uh, ideally monthly, and then if you really want to go for it, you know, weekly. Uh, but whatever schedule works for you, uh, or, you know, you need to commit to it and, and stick to it. Um, so, you know, and I, I think a good way to, you know, if you start, if you haven't, if you're not already doing this, is you want to, you know, create that pipeline. You kind of got to give yourself a head start. So maybe get two or three articles you know, written in advance and ready to go so that you're not scrambling out of the gate, uh, you know, after that first month, uh, you know, to come up with a new topic. And then, you know, people obviously, we all get busy and, and these things have a, a way of falling uh, to the wayside. Now, for some advisors, you know, who are comfortable writing or, or, you know, they can do this on their blog or, you know, it's, it's not a big struggle. But for many, it is. Uh, they, either A, they don't have the time, or B, they just don't have the writing skills, um, and, it, or, and it takes up too much of their time. So, um, yeah, that's the service we provide. If uh, people want to outsource that, uh, we work with them to develop an editorial calendar, uh, you know, come up with good topics, write the drafts. Uh, you know, you've got to allow that time for the compliance review. You've kind of, kind of build in uh, all, the, all the steps so that you're not uh, scrambling at the last minute. Now you mentioned again newsletters and you also talked about blogs and the frequency of newsletters when you get into that weekly time frame perhaps some of that more frequent content may lend itself to the blog platform. Do you see any significant differences between frequency and type of content on blogs and on financial advisor websites? versus the frequency and type of content on newsletters. Again, what have you learned? What's, what's most effective for each channel? Maybe that's a, a better way to phrase that question. Yeah, well, I think you know, there's a couple of different ways of looking at it because the, you know, the blog is really an inbound marketing strategy because people have to find you uh, versus uh, an e-newsletter or even a print newsletter that you are pushing out to, to clients or prospects. So I think you know, the two can work hand in hand. Um, yeah, the blog obviously should, should be more frequent. It doesn't have to be, but, you know, it's, people I think have lower expectations of a blog entry. You know, it, can, you know, it doesn't need to be as long. It can be 300 to 500 words. It's something you could, you know, if you're proficient in writing that you can crank out pretty quickly. Uh, whereas I think for a newsletter, people are looking for maybe a little more polished and, you know, in more in-depth content. Um, so I think, uh, you know, the, the combination of the two uh, will work well. And um, while you were saying that, I was thinking about, um, well, it's, I was trying to jog my train of thought on what you were talking about with the 300, I'm trying to remember, 300 words, 400 words, because I had a really good question out of it. Oh, yeah. uh, but I'll have to come back to it later. Um, but even though we're now in the digital age, blogs are really taking off with a lot of financial advisors for, for those who really have the energy and effort and the compliance buy-in to do blogging. But let's not forget the value of print media. So what are some things advisors should do to perhaps uh, make themselves known for their local print media? Maybe, you know, how do they go about getting a regular column in their local newspaper yeah. or their community newspaper? Uh, 
what are some strategies that you see are working for financial advisors? Yeah, I mean that's a good point. What you just mentioned, uh, you know, your your local newspaper. Uh, you know, keeping in mind that uh, you know technology is obviously shifting, and uh, for if, if you're targeting younger people, you know, they may not be even looking at newspapers. Right. Um, but most newspapers have an online version, so one way or another, they're probably going to see it. So, uh, yeah, I actually worked with an advisor earlier this year out in California to, to uh, you know, ghostwrite articles for him on the topic. I think it was retirement income planning was his kind of niche. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's definitely, you know, these your local paper, depending on where you live, I mean, if you're in New York City and you want to get a column in the New York Times, it's probably not going to happen. But if you're in a, a smaller town, uh, those places are, are eager for content. Uh, Again, the, the key in working with an editor at a place like that is, you know, you've got to be giving valuable content, educational, and not just pitching your, your products and services. So, you know, you've got to maybe do a little soft sell at the end of your article or in your bio. But over time, you build up some credibility. Um, another place to look at is patch.com, which is owned by AOL. Um, I'm not sure if they're nationwide now. I know they're in my area. I'm in the Boston area. Um, and I know uh, an advisor friend of mine who has a, a column on there, and you know it's a great way to raise his visibility in the community. People see his name, and it's similar uh, in approach to the e-newsletter and these other ways of marketing yourself. And that you know people may not um, pick up the phone and call you immediately, but if they read you over time, uh, hmm. they may eventually. Uh, I could see patches everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, over time, you know, over time when the need comes and uh, they get laid off and they've got a 401k, they need to figure out what to do with. Um, you know, hopefully your name is going to be the one that that jumps to mind. Uh, the other area to, to target is you know uh, trade journals, um, depending on on your target audience. Uh, again, you know, all these publications uh, welcome basically what they call you know it's free content for them. They don't have to pay somebody. Uh, they don't have to pay a journalist. So um, you know, newspapers are, are suffering, so they'll they welcome any content they can get as long as it's good quality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as we wrap up uh, today's conversation, uh, kind of reiterate and walk back through some of the the core strategies financial advisors can pursue for their content moving forward in 2013. We talked about newsletters and newsletter content blogs and blog content and then local paper content so as advisors pursue this throughout the next 12 months what do you think the key is for them to follow to to keep it up and keep a consistent uh, follow through with their marketing copy uh, I mean pretty much you know making a commitment to doing it making sure you've got the resources in place uh, whether in-house or outsourced uh, you know to accomplish what you want to do also when you're writing you know I, I, I stress Especially for advisors to write in an authentic tone. You know, uh, a lot of people when they sit down to write, they, they suddenly revert back to writing their college term papers, and uh, and they write to impress uh, their their professor versus just educating people. And you know, picture yourself talking to a client and, and write it the way you would speak it is, is what I always uh, counsel. And then finally, you know, invest in your website. If you take a look. You Google your local, your town, and the words financial planner, you know, you'll find 10 advisors in your community. You look at those websites, 9 out of 10 look like they were, and probably were designed in, you know, 1999 uh, and haven't been updated since then. So I would say spend a little money to update your website, get a blog integrated with it, um, repurpose the content, wherever, what, you know, what you're writing or producing, it can be published and repurposed in a variety of different places so that you're getting the most bang for your buck. Great. Perfect, Neil. So for those advisors that want to pursue the strategy, but they may not have all the time in the world to write their own information and they do want to outsource uh, perhaps to Bullseye Financial Communications, where can those advisors find you and find more information? Sure. Uh, well, our website is uh, bullseyecommunications.net. Um, we're on, I'm personally on Twitter at, at Neil Ryan, that's N-E-I-L-R-H-E-I-N, -E and uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, all those, all those great social media places. All right. Excellent, Neil. Thank you for joining me today and helping Thank share you. some ideas about marketing copy uh, as we advance through 2013. And I'm going to open up my share window here to 
preview ahead at what's coming up in the upcoming month for FPPAD on air. A week from today, I'm going to be meeting with Peter Giza, founder of Spitbook Consulting. You may know him from his previous days uh, with Red Black Software on their rebalancing program. Uh, next, we'll be talking with Ethan Eden, the CEO of Market76, which is a free CRM software for financial advisors. And wrapping up the month of January with a, an interview with Tim Welsh, founder of Nexus Strategy and a very uh, big advocate of technology and practice management resources for financial advisors today. So again, Neil, thank you so much for sharing information, and I hope you have a happy and prosperous 2013. Same to you. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and tune in next week. Bye-bye.